Hello there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In the previous video we spoke about binding text boxes. Today we are gonna have a look at binding combo boxes. So we have this very simple project. It contains a database. That database have a table people and uh, the table contains rows 1, Smith uh, and 2, Todd and Linda. Now let's say in your work you need to have a combo box containing the names these names are retrieved from the table people okay so how do you do that well uh, first of course you need to do what you need to uh, you need to have your data set so where is the data set double click that you have a data set uh, containing a data table that links to uh, your actual uh, database table, right? And uh, now, if you put a combo box here, uh, where is that? Combo box. Now, I have this combo box right now. I need to bind it. Now, the binding of combo boxes is a little different from text boxes. Text boxes are bound to a column in a row, uh, which means it displays the current value in that row. If you change anything, the values are being changed in the, in the data table. Here, you don't want to change the value. You want to fill the list. Okay? So, it's kind of different. So here you can open this one. Okay, you see there is use data bound items here. This will allow you a quick uh, configuration, right? So you just put a marker here. Now, uh, here is going to ask you about the data member, right? So you can see here there are following information. So I select people and it added the binding data. Okay. And uh, it's going to ask you about which value to be displayed. Here we will display the name. Now, there are a few other properties. There is a value member. Now, the value member means uh, if I select, for example, name and get the in your code, you try to get the value from the combo box. Should I get the name itself or the ID or the age? Okay, so here I will make it the following. I will make it the ID. So I will select the name and add a button here to display the value. Okay, and here I'm gonna say uh, button one dot text equals combo box one dot selected value semicolon or uh, maybe dot to string just to make sure it's a string so we cast it okay so now we are gonna run this okay so now we have a smith if I click this one you see one if I select Todd and I click that you see two if I select Linda and click that I get three but if I say RRR and I try to click I will get an error uh, and the reason for that well ah, there we go uh, the reason for that is uh, it's actually null I entered a value that is not in the data table because of that I got a null there is no key for that value and uh, this is why I'm getting an, an error now Let's go back to our program and let's change this binding a little bit. So the value member, I am gonna change that to age. Okay. So now when I run this code, so when I click here, you see the age of Smith. When I clicked here, I get the age of Todd, and now I can get the age of Linda. Okay. So what's important here is that uh this display member means the friendly text that will be displayed to the user this one in many cases uh you might want to uh 
make this the primary key, especially if you have uh, many too many relationship or one too many relationship extra. Uh, this would represent the primary key. Okay. Now, uh, there is another thing here. Uh, there is another uh, binding, which is the selected value. This means when you change the information over here, where does this value goes to? Where does the ID get stored? So you can specify another table. Now, to do that, we are going to change few things. Okay. So uh, first, I'll have to go to the database itself. Uh, where's that database, my friends? Okay. So let me go to the database. Right. These are the table. So now. Uh, let's say I have a table linking each person with um, with a car. So one person could have multiple cars or something like that. So I'm gonna right click here, okay, and now I'm gonna add a new table. So here, this is gonna be car, car. This is gonna be what? car ID there we go and I have what ID for the person which is integer this is going to be the a foreign key and finally uh, I have car number character varying okay of 30 okay so here this means you get a car with the following number okay and uh, the ID represents the person and I will update that right and update the database so we got this so far so good now I won't follow any information here uh, I will try to follow it manually and I need to update the data set. So let me go here. Oops, oh my mistake. Let me go to the data set over here and uh, yeah, maybe uh, refresh here. Oh, oops. What is that? Oh, there we go. I'll just drag this one and drop it over here. Okay. So I got this second table. Now, what I need to do, let me go to this form. I will delete these guys. Okay, I will delete these as well. And also go to the form and delete all the extra things that uh, have been added. Go. That's wonderful. And now we have the code as it was uh, almost at the beginning. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to change this to be what? Uh, what is it? This one. So instead of dragging and dropping a later grid view, I'll change this into details and the drag and the drop it here. Okay? So now, when I try to enter the information for a car, I can enter an ID, no problem. I can enter a car number, no problem. But here I should enter the ID of a person. Now, it's not easy, so I will use a combo box, right? So here, I'm going to delete this one. Instead, I will go and choose a checkbox or combo box. There we go. There's a combo box there. Okay. Nice. And now, I am going to bind this. So I will link this to other... Uh, wait a second. Project data sources. This one, I'll bind it to people. Okay, I will display the person name. I will get the value ID from that name, and then the value will get stored into the ID in the car binding source. There we go. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense to you guys. Okay. And to make things a little bit even uh, 
you know more uh, kind of more clear I hope I will change this also into grid view usually you don't uh, provide two displays but for now I just want to show you this because I want to show you what's happening inside okay so I'm gonna run this now there we go the first car I will choose Smith and uh, whatever add that and it did not uh, uh, refresh at all right to Linda All right, wait a second. Okay, so you see here, uh, probably I should have pressed save or something. Anyway, so what you see here uh, is that I selected Linda, and what did I get here? The idea of Linda. Now, in selecting a value from a combo box is much easier than remembering the ID, especially if you, for example, have 500 customers or 500 people, or maybe number uh, IDs and thousand you can't remember them of course okay so now every time I change the value here you can see things get changed as well okay does that make sense to you guys so this is how you bind a combo box you uh, specify the source of information you specify the ID and you specify where that ID goes in the record now let me show you this again in case you might need to you know have a look at it so here the data source the data source here represents the source of the data being displayed in the control only the source now display member which column gets its value displayed for the end user the value member is the value to be stored in the destination column and the selected value is where the value or where the destination column is not this uh, this shouldn't be the same table it should be usually usually it's a different table and you specify for example here I am selecting the ID so I am putting that in the ID okay so it's very straightforward very easy now one thing that you might uh, notice that let's say I run this I try to add a record uh, this one Smith whatever I save that now what if I write a name that doesn't exist and try to save uh, alright uh, well you might don't want to users to let's say selecting a value that doesn't exist so what you could do Wait a second. Okay, it's just stopped. You select the combo box here, and yeah, there is the drop down style. You could just select drop down list, and this way you will prevent users from entering values that does not exist at all. So one, whatever. I could save that. Maybe I should select a name, and uh, oh, I forgot to press add. Right, so here there's one, whatever. Oh, forgot to select the value, and now I'm getting uh, an error. My mistake. Okay. Add a record, one, a value, whatever, and save that. Okay, so you can see now you avoid uh, making an error. Uh, right, so with this very simple trick you could do what you need now there is another control that have a similar behavior okay so let we might want to use that so now instead of using a combo box I'm gonna click and delete that and I will try out a list box okay uh, I wanted to put that in another video but actually they are uh, pretty much the same where's that uh, let me see uh, jkl label oh this is a list box there we go so I'll put this one here 
Okay, let me make this a little bit smaller. I'll put this this list box over here. All right. I know this is not organized just for the sake of the example. So, duh. you know, sorry about the mess. I'm not proud about this type of work. Not good. Okay. So now we need to bind this one. Now, use data bind. Now, as you can see, this is exactly the same set of options that you have in Kamba box. So again, you open this one, you will select people binding source. Uh, this one has been created from the previous uh, options. Uh, okay, when we created the combo box and bound it, it created the binding source for people. We will display P name, we are going to store the ID, and that ID will go into the ID in the car binding source. And now if we run this and we add a record, we select one, three, dot, save that, mm, maybe four, whatever, Linda, and uh, nine, whatever, Smith, okay, and so on. So you can now see that. Uh, uh, I should have filled some information because I pressed plus. Okay, no problem there. But anyway, so let me just uh, continue running that. Oh, I'm sorry, my mistake. Uh, one, sorry. Add the record one, two, Smith. Add the record two, two. Oh, uh, Todd. Add the record three, three, Linda. And uh, yeah, so now if I navigate between these, you can see that the selection changes based on the binding in the uh, and it uh, you know based on the binding and the value it has. Okay, so it's very straightforward. It's very easy. Um, uh, just that you need to pay attention. To these values, yeah, what is that? Da, 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 da. Let me see. You need to pay attention to these values. What the data source is, what it means here, what the display member means, what the value member means, and so on. It's not that difficult. Once you understand this very well, you'll find that it's very easy for you to find controls and work with them. Uh, so, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you around. Bye-bye.